I, I want to talk about an issue that's going to come up. It's going to come up through the subcommittee that I chair uh, for a few minutes, and it has to do with elections, and it has to do with money. Now, Russia tried to interfere with our election. You can write that down and take it home to mama. It's true. They did it. They didn't change a single vote. But they did try to influence the way Americans did vote. To try to prevent that from happening again in 2018, this Congress gave our states $380 million to shore up their election systems. They hadn't spent all of it yet. Uh, this Congress also took other steps. We, the Senate has unanimously approved two bipartisan election security bills. They're not, I think they're both now pending in the House. We passed the Defending Integrity of Voting Systems Act. That's going to make it a federal crime to hack any voting system in a federal election. We passed the Defending Elections Against Trolls from Enemy Regimes Act. We call that the Deter Act. It'll bar people who interfere in our elections or attempt to do so from entering the United States. Our Department of Homeland Security, very able women and men, our cybersecurity advisors there, smart people, they're helping our state and local officials on a daily basis guard against threats. We had a classified briefing. By we, I mean all members of the Senate, Republicans, Democrats. Classified means that it's in our, our, um, our room down in the basement where foreign agents cannot listen in. The FBI director was there. Uh, the director of national intelligence was there. Uh, most senior ranking members of our military were there. And the topic was, how, how did we do in 2018? We know the Russians and others took a run at us in 2016. They didn't succeed, but they tried. How did we do in 2018? And let me tell you, our, our, our men and women at the FBI and in our military and in the Homeland Security, they are on it. Our 18 election went off without a hitch. I didn't, I'm not saying that some foreign uh, despots didn't try to influence how we voted, but they didn't, they, they didn't change a single vote. Our people did a great job. And every senator, Democrat and Republican, in that room, in that classified setting, I can't tell you the details. I wish I could. If it could, you'd be impressed. But everybody walked out of there and said, man, we're on it. 18, 2018 elections went off without a hitch. And by God, we're ready for 2020. But we didn't just do that. I'm going to go back to what I just said. We, we gave our states $380 million. They haven't even spent all of it yet. But there's going to be an effort to spend a whole bunch more to give it to the states. I don't know how much, at least 200 million, maybe 400 million, maybe a billion. If I thought it was necessary, I'd vote for it. Um, some of my colleagues are in perfectly good faith. They think the states need more money, even though, even though they hadn't spent what we gave them to, gave them to begin with. E even, even though that our, our, all of our intelligence Officials say we're ready for 2020. Some of my colleagues in good faith think they need more money. But some of my colleagues see this as a first step to nationalizing elections. And that's what worries me. You know what makes our elections safest of all? You can't just hack one system.
you got to hack 50. you got to hack 50 because the states run elections, and they do a pretty good job. They do a really good job. And there is an effort, not by all, but by some, they want to get the federal government in, in charge of elections. And you know how you do that? You don't just jump in and grab them. You sneak up on them. And I'll tell you how you sneak up on them. You start giving them money. And you get them addicted. And you give them a little more money. And you get them addicted. And then the next thing you know, the feds are running the elections. And not for all, but for some of my colleagues, that's what this is about. Now, this country started out as a, as a self-reliant, tax-averse union of states. Very skeptical of the federal government. And our, our original states and all those after, after them, they insisted on running their own elections. And it has worked. We don't need the federal government in charge of elections. But there, there's some of my colleagues coming this time. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm not impugning their integrity. They're entitled to their opinion, but because this is America, but I'm entitled to mine. Now, in the effort last year, we were able to beat it back. I'm afraid some of my friends on this side of the aisle this time are having second thoughts. I'm hearing all kind of rumors. You, it's amazing what you can, can, can pick up around this place if you just walk around the floor and keep your mouth shut and your ears open. You hear all kind of stuff. And I'm here to say, if we do it, we're going to look back when the federal government is running our elections and screwing them up and say this is where it began. began. If, 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 if you want to put the United States federal government in charge of your elections instead of the states. If you think that's a swell idea, I want you to close your eyes for a minute and imagine living in a world designed by the post office, because that's what you're going to get. I, I uh, suggest the absence of a quorum, Madam President.